Again, walking day and night along the fence that kept the ravine hidden from prying eyes of teens and curious adults like me. I never knew why I was walking by it, but I would find myself walking with it. It felt alive, like it wasn't an inanimate object. I was always cautious with my surroundings, but I always drew a blank whenever I walked near that fence. Like I had a companion there with me, stalking me, studying me. My thoughts always vanished when I walked along the fence, like my mind put on pause. I could feel a hand reach out to the back of my neck, like claws of a hawk reaching out to its prey. Such a menacing feeling, but safe and familiar. Terrifying. I couldn't understand my fascination? No my obsession with this strange friend. I reach out to the worn wood, caressing the textures of time with my fingers, without a single thought of consequences. No remorse to my actions. A splinter wrenched itself in my finger. I drew a short breath and quickly withdrew my hand from the wood, raising the wound to my lips. I tried to pry the horrid parasite from my flesh. Harsh whispers began to arise from behind the fence. I stood there dazed until a howl snapped me out of it. No one was around me and I continued my walk, but began to feel like I wasn't alone. Something more menacing than I ever have felt before. I looked behind me, but there was nothing there but my sh shadow and emptiness. I walked slightly faster than normal, wanting to hurry away from the feeling, thinking no more of it. I continued about my chores and other businesses. Days had gone by since that moment, forgotten entirely. I strolled again by the wood beams, fingers carefully gliding along this time, ensuring that I wouldn't get hurt. <laughs> I smiled at the intentness of my hands. Then something made me stand still in my tracks. I felt cold numbing almost those harsh whispers returned to me I felt helpless to move Suff suffocating like hands around my throat the atmosphere was choking me my mind racing rapidly to explain what was going on my heart thumping loudly my eyes darting for an answer. I began to grow lightheaded. I started gasping for, for air as I reached for my throat. The whispers growing louder and louder. I began to panic, fighting uh, the unseen terror before me or, or around me. My breath grew short and harsh. My voice couldn't sound anything intelligent. I was... Until I was able to yell up for it to stop. Then, like, nothing happened. Everything vanished from me. Like, it wasn't real. What was that? I couldn't answer and quickly fled from the scene, only to find myself looking back to the emptiness and shadows. I must have been running while looking back because I ran into a pole. I came to and looked around me. No one came to my aid. Nothing around me except the fence and what lied behind it. This was the final straw. I decided to climb the fence and see what had been terrorizing me for weeks. 
Drawing all the strength I had, I got up and fumbled over the fence. Probably the stupidest thing I've done, but it was time I saw what was there. I half expected to see teens playing tricks with speakers or other various parlor tricks. But the half was more terrified and wanted to turn back and not know. Well, maybe more than half. I slowly crept into the overgrown greenery and felt that presence again. My heart began to thump loudly. I felt like I was giving away my location and letting whatever or whomever it was know that I was in their territory. Drops of sweat formed on my forehead and hands creeping along. I began to hear the whispers again, but this time the words were more intelligible. Or at least I could tell they were words. I heard them over and over again. I froze in my tracks. It seemed like my heart stopped. Those words sounded familiar to me. I felt cold. My legs turned to jelly like I was going to collapse. I just stood there stupefied. My mind told my legs to run, but to no avail. The whispers grew louder, and then out of the trees a loud screech. Like a twig snapping, my mind jolted and I ran as fast as I could. Running away, not looking back towards from where the screaming was coming from. I reached the fence in record time and jumped over like a rabbit. I never knew I could jump that high. <laughs> Once I was away from the fence, the feeling of fear and cold melted away into oblivion. I felt clear and warm, but curiosity piqued beyond submission. I knew I had to go back and find out. I spent weeks studying up on the supernatural, even old languages that died, but still haunt some tongues. Each passage brought me back to the things of the wolf or a hound of hell, the like an old friend calling out to me from a crowd. I dive deep in this madness, with little or no knowledge of how the end would be. My books and papers stacking higher and higher. Maps strung out all over the walls, with strings and marks all over the place. No meaning to you, but to me, much, much more. I rapidly scribbled notes, paced around my desk like a tiger waiting for its meal. Crouched in a corner whilst my mind was breaking, but yet my soul strengthened me to continue. Everything kept going back to the wolf passage after passage went back to the same creature. Over what seemed to be an eternity, I finally felt ready to venture through the ravine and find out what laid there. I felt dazed, like to regain a memory from long ago. Things looked familiar, felt familiar, but with no connection. I packed everything I thought I might need, herbs, metals, symbols, and my notes, and some tools. I felt like a movie where the hero prepares for an awesome battle and would win in the end. But I fear that the ending is, or will be, sad. My journey began at that fence. I looked over it as if I'd never seen it before. My mind raced with rapid thoughts of horror, gore scenes with familiarity, like pieces being put together. I wiped my eye and climbed. I landed and found the forest to be clear of fog and sound. Weird, as if it was normal for at least some birds or chatter, but there it was picture with no sound. I crept across the wet ground, quickening my pace as I went further in the wood. I had no sense of direction. 
The compass I had brought was faulty, or so it seemed, but I felt I didn't need it. Like a memory lost, but found. My senses at a loss to what was there, or wasn't. There was something there, in the, through the trees. I'm sure of it. I ran towards it, not bright, but I needed to know. I didn't call out to it. I didn't. I didn't want to entirely give myself away. This shadowy figure was swift, but I had a feeling it was wanting me to follow. I slowed down. Mustn't get too excited. I stood there, eyeing it. I had a feeling it was staring back at me. A cold, icy stare. I felt empty. I began to shiver as if the wind began to blow harder. Everything turned gray. I knew danger was near, and I leapt away from the stare and hid behind some brushes. I opened my pack and studied the paper, but the pages faded from my my view. Panic-stricken, I fumbled through the pages with the helplessness I felt. I ran away from my hiding spot. I knew if I stayed, I wouldn't be able to know what was truly going on. I was just running with this blind fear. I didn't know what was going on. Why was it cold? Where was this fog coming in? What was that thing? I continued to run until I fell into a ditch. I laid there for a bit. It seems like I was asleep, but now awake. I gathered my thoughts together, looking around for any signs of anything. I opened my pack and looked through the papers again with a more clear mind. I looked at the maps and notes, hoping to find a clue. And then the whispers started. Louder, more like voices talking than whispering. I looked up to the fog and the figures gliding past. I couldn't see where their legs were. It was so ominous. They chanted as they glided over my hiding spot, past my hiding spot. I held my hand to my mouth to, to muffle the harsh breathing. I was, I was so frightened by the sight, but in such awe. I look at my notes and found my rosary. I tied it to my wrist and said a prayer. I am not Catholic but I knew a religious relic would help me. I know I'm not the one to rely on religion, but I need hope on this one. I bowed my head for a minute, gathering my strength. I took a Latin dictionary out and looked through the pages and found the reference to an old prayer. Deus mihi benedex, fortudum men adent calides fumbling over the words as I felt faint. Deus mehe benedict fortinum me ade cali cali but before I could make my move I heard a growl and the words Daimodum almost like an exploding sound coming from the ground. The earth began to shake forth with such a vigorous mind. I think I broke my hand trying to stabilize myself. I lied there, paralyzed with fear and confusion. There was an agonizing cry struck with terror within my heart. The cries grew louder and more agonizing. The fog became such an insufferable smoke. The dirt grew hotter by the moment. What was happening? I picked myself up, peeking over the edge to see people tied to poles, facing a fire. The poles slanted towards the glow. I couldn't believe it. A child, two young women, and an old man. 
A figure in a flowing robe with the face of a wolf stalked by with a blade, gripping it as it went past the poles. An animus veste, eh? With such anger and eruption in that voice, it gurgled more words that I couldn't understand. And with a cry, it struck the youngest of them. I cried out and I fell back to the ground, shaking, and then I heard it in very clear words. Seize I tried creature. to run, but with my hand in the ground shaking, I couldn't stabilize myself enough, and I was surrounded by the figures. Carne cut singue. Was all that they were saying as they leapt in to grab me. I struggled as best as I could, but they broke my arms. I couldn't care about the pain. I was too scared to care. I kicked and I screamed as best as I could. But it was no use. They lifted me high in the air. And I was trapped in the arms of the beings with the taste for human sacrifice. They carried me towards the figure who threw me on the ground and stabbed at my ribs, leaving me to bleed in front of it. I coughed and I choked on my my blood and I looked up towards the child who looked over at me with tears and looked down into the hole. Salmonos. I coughed. I kept coughing and crying as I saw the child die. I reached up to the figure. It looked at me with anger. I couldn't see its eyes but I knew and felt what wasn't there. How dare you! Come and try to stop our sacrifice! It screamed at me. The screeches were loud and unbearable to my ears. I cried out with it, but my lungs filled with fluid that all I could do was cough. It picked me up and held me by my throat. Claws came forth and dug in my throat. I felt the life draining from me. Salvin Nos! I cried out, and the figure growled, holding me tighter, putting me over the flame. It screeched. Damien, I have a size card here. And screeched more. The figures did as it commanded. My blood poured into the flame. I couldn't breathe anymore. Tears rolled down my face. Face, I knew and accepted my fate. You don't remember, do you? You were just a child when you first came here. I looked over towards the child and shook my hand, and it laughed. Of course not. He doesn't want you to remember just yet. My arms dangling, and the rosary fell into the flame. Stupid child. You felt you needed that? Oh, poor, poor soul. I could feel it smile through the mask. I was helpless against the figure. I knew that voice. Everything blurry. But I, re I remember I was tied to a similar pole. I bit the figure before they could throw me, and I ran and I ran, everything blank. I blocked it out, and I came back to my fate. He's been the patient long scream, long the enough, grew higher child. As it dangled me over, I wasn't going to the flame with all my might. I reached for the figure, and the the pain was insufferable, but I needed to break free. I cried out as I finally grabbed the robe. It threw me in, but I was able to hold on. I was going to take it with me. What are you doing? Let go! I didn't, and we both fell into the flame. Uh, it cried and I fell silently. The flames engulfed us. So did silence. Everything was orange, red, yellow fading into black. What happened next, I can't tell you. All I remember was that I was lying on the ground 
with smoke covering me. My arms sore, but healed. My hand, I could move it. My, my ribs, no puncture marks. Like, nothing happened, but I was so sore. I gasped for air and jolted up. I was surrounded again with figures, and they looked at me as I looked around. I was waiting for a fight. Elect us was all that they were chanting. I sat there. I felt there was no more threat. They helped me to my feet and washed my wounds and clothed me in their robes. This, this was my fate. I was the chosen one by him. I am the head of the circle. I am Lupus Morti Diabli, the bringer of death in the ravine. <laughs>